when the top level was built, eh? no more could be placed. It was and is the maximal apex. Greetings, viewers. Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, doing another Skyrim video. Um, I might move on to something else. I do these videos way ahead of time. And in this case, I'm going to do a quest for a Daedric artifact called the Ogma Infinium. Now, this item requires multiple adventures. And so I'm going to break it down into two parts. Um, I'm calling it the quest for Ogmum Infinium, and this is part one. It involves going to Septimus, and then he sends you to Dwemer Runes, which allow you to get the Dragon Scroll, which is part of the main quest. If you don't do the main quest, you can still get the Dragon Scroll. Otherwise, if you do the main quest, you get to a certain level, you'll have to go to Septimus anyway. In this case, I've explored out the necessary dungeons and locations before I went on this quest, so I can just rapidly travel and not make exorbitantly long videos. So let's get on with part one, and it is called Discerning the Transmundane. You have to go to Septimus, uh, Septimus Cygnus um, Outpost and talk to the crazy old guy and get the first part of this quest. And let's talk to him. No. When the top level was built, eh? no more could be placed. It was and is the maximal apex. Ah, the ice entombs the heart. The bane of Kagranak and Degothur. To harness it is to know the fundaments. The Dwemer lockbox hides it from me. The Elder Scroll gives insight deeper than the Deep Ones, though, to bring about the opening. I have seen enough to know their fabric, the warp of air, the weft of time. But no, it is not in my possession. Here. Well, here as in this plane, Mondas, Tamriel. Nearby, relatively speaking. <laughs> On the cosmological scale, well, it's all nearby. One block lifts the other. Septimus will give what you want, but you must bring him something in return. You see this masterwork of the Dwemer, deep inside their greatest knowings. Septimus is clever among men, but he is but an idiot child compared to the dullest of the Dwemer. Lucky then they left behind their own way of reading the Elder Scrolls. In the depths of Black Reach, one yet lies. Have you heard of Black Reach? Cast upon where Dremer City slept, the yearning spire hidden learnings kept. <laughs> Under deep, below the dark, the hidden keep, Tower Mzark. Oft-hand, the point of puncture, of first entry of the tapping. Delve to its limits, and Black Reach lies just beyond. But not all can enter there. Only Septimus knows the hidden key to loose the lock to jump beneath the deathly rock. Two things I have for you. Two shapes. One edged, one round. 
the round one for tuning. Dwemer music is soft and subtle, and needed to open their cleverest gates. The edged lexicon for inscribing. To us, a hunk of metal. To the Dwemer, a full library of knowings, but empty. Find Mazark and its sky dome. The machinations there will read the scroll and lay the lore upon the cube. Trust Septimus. He knows you can know. Uh, Septimus gives you a lexicon and an attune attunement sphere. So you can open up the, uh, whatchamacallit, the entrance to Blackreach. And I'll do a video on Blackreach, but I already pre-scouted out locations. And you have to go to a location on the map here. And I already scouted it out. And, oops, okay, not there where I have to go. But... Let's see, I'm going to save and I'm going to turn on the Discerning the Transmundane quest. And you have to go to this place here, not Hobbs Cave Altifad, which, again, it's a pretty big dungeon and loaded with a lot of stuff. I'll be doing some fast forwarding. But one of the good things is you have this, you, you don't care about the expedition manifest. It tells the story. You're going to find these guys in the crevice that they find. And you're going to wind up Jadar and Jazar, the Kaji brothers that were hired for labor. You're going to bump into them. The good part is you have a chest up here where you can dump stuff. And it will remain. And I'm going to fast forward to get to this part of the quest where you enter the, um, whatchamacallit, crack in the glacier. Once we enter this, I'm going to do a little fast forwarding or a lot of fast forwarding. This is a very extensive journey, and as it is, it's two parts, uh, it's part one of the whole discerning the transmundane and getting the Ogum Infinitum. So I really, this is a dungeon crawl, and you go through and you meet up with some crazy people and some other stuff. I'm going to fast forward to the key events. Come to a research table here with a dead Dwemer spider. Again, this is a good place. There is a chest near this table where you can store stuff. You're going to find a lot of Dwemer junk and you can melt down to Dwemer ingots and increase your smithing power or skill to an extremely high level or actually 100 very rapidly. This chest here, again, you can store stuff. And a lot of junk that you will bring through and help your smithing skill. I'll do another video on smithing and putting together a dragon bone armor, etc. later on. Again, I'm going to fast forward to some key parts here. Okay, this was one of the Kaji brothers, Jadar. He's killed his other brother and, well, gone crazy because he is a Guma addict, I believe. Anyway, again, 
this is a good encounter. You meet one of the characters. I'm going to fast forward to some, well, oh, wait, here. This is where you pick up some Dwemer junk. And the solid Dwemer metal, the decorative, uh, here's Uman's journal. He talks about the brothers. It's the Dwemer stuff you pick up. You can turn into ingots again to continue to forge and raise your smithing level to 100 so you can craft dragon bone armor. After battling some Dwemer mechanical creatures, you come to this locked room. Yeah, this is actually a great place to, again, store some junk. It's not too far off the main entrance. If you need to unload and unencumber yourself, you go into this locked room and locked chests, and you can, again, store some stuff. I'm going to fast forward through some more because this is an extremely long dungeon crawl and I don't want this video to be super long. It's difficult to upload. On top of that, most of your fighting is not overly important. Now you come to this locked room and I've decided while editing this video, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to transition. Because if you follow the path and you pay attention and you look around and you look through the nooks and crannies, you'll bump into this area and you'll unlock it. You fight this Dwemer sphere and there's plenty of dwarven junk and bowls you can sell, the decorative struts, etc. Gather them into a chest and pick it up later. Again, I, I'm doing this, I'm going to just transition through to um, other areas to save space because it's a very long dungeon crawl. Next level is the Ultifod Aminocularry, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And it's just kind of a tower area you got to walk through and walk down. There's little rooms here where you can hide stuff or store stuff. You got to kind of pick and choose where you want to store things because you're going to have to go back and get them. Again, I'm going to do a little fast forwarding or just transitioning to get to the highlights of this very long dungeon crawl. This is an area where you find another person of the exploration team. If you read his uh, journal, he talks about coming into contact with the Dwemer. Uh, automatons and barely escaping with his life. It's kind of boring reading. You can read it if you want. Um, I'm going to move on and open up this chest and fast forward to another encounter. Okay, I just transitioned through a chunk of Wandering and Fighting Falmore. This is a very important area. So you wind up encountering the Falmer who are, how should I say, kind of brutal and experimenting. I'm trying to sneak, but that's not going to happen. I'm going to take this guy down with some arrows and switch to my swords here. 
and take him down quickly. He's got, yeah, weak poison. Let's, this other guy is coming up at me, and he's, I'm going to stun him and take him down. Now, the Falmer are very cruel, twisted creatures. They experiment in poisons. You go into their little hovels here. There's this area here with the alchemy lab. There's a junk pile here with bones and some other stuff. Let's see, a candlelight here. And again, there is some, there's an alchemy table with ingredients for making poisons, essentially. And they experiment on other creatures with the poisons they make. Damage magic, yeah, I'm going to put, I, I can't really, nothing to do, so I'm going to quit alchemy and move on with this whole thing, if I can here. There, I got that. There is this junk area where you see they dispose of bones and other stuff. There's some Dwemer junk, large strut, which is useful, metal plate metal again stuff that you're going to carry along and eventually melt down don't take the scrap metal the bowl i take that for sale and go into the little hovel here uh yeah this was obviously some form of storage area so let's move on to the next part which is actually the more grim part here i'm going to try and sneak and use the bowl because these Dwemer are far more difficult. And I'm going to add poison to the bowl to help take them down. Again, these are more cruel creatures. And once you get up, oh, they're aware of me. I'm going to see if I can shoot and take one down quickly. Yeah. He's going to come at me and take him down. i am let this battle play out here. Okay, this is going to be a good area to dump some stuff. Uh, you can avoid the whole uh, fire stuff by walking around it. Easy enough, huh? Nothing in this hovel. And then again, you want to avoid the fire stuff just by walking around it here. And in this hovel is a chest, which you can unlock, expert unlock. And you could actually store stuff in here that you can get later because you're close to an entry. And I'll explain that after I fast forward a little bit. Now you get to battle with these three Falmore. They can be very aggressive and tricky. Um, this is where. You got to watch your healing and you can get way overconfident. I'm going to use some healing and then I'm going to try and poison my blades. And hopefully I'll get through this alive because these are very powerful Falmore. And what happens next? Oh, I got these guys down. They're dead. Now I'm going to show you what's next after I search them out. Again, I said the one area you can store stuff and unencumber yourself. Now, I'm going to pick up what I can from these guys. 
you got some egg sacs here. And now you look, this elevator leads up. They've got their hovel. And now you can see where they are tortured. Bailey, she's a high elf. I probably could have come back and used her when I do the Ogham Infinitum Part 2. Yeah, you kind of forget. Now, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit and then explain to you the whole elevator situation. What I did is I went back to where I had stuff stored. I'm overly encumbered, so what I did is I whirlwind sprinted all the way back to this place, and this elevator here, even though I'm moving really slow, will bring me up to a very important level where I go to the Altifad Glacial Crevice, and yes, there's some egg sacks and stuff you can rob, but once you get back to the proper glacial crevice, and you can store things. And I'm going to fast forward through to that. Back to this research table. This is where you can drop off everything that is overly encumbering you the scrap metal, the bowls, anything that you can store. An iron ore, these decorative struts, this stuff doesn't go away. This is a permanent lockbox and no one's going to steal it from you. So you're better off storing it and then getting back to where you go down further into Altifad. And you just use the elevator to go back down. And then you can go continue on again after you've stored all this stuff. Okay, immediately after, you can walk through this torture lab, whatever, and you're going to encounter some spiders and some Dwemer, or not Dwemer, Falmer. And you can fight through them. It's a very quick fight. I'm going to fast forward through it to get to the next area. Fad Cathedral is the next area, and this is the important part. You wind up, you got to sneak up on, there is this Falmer here. God, I'm stumbling on my words. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, you sneak up on this uh, Falmer guard. You don't want to step on any of these pads here because they activate traps. So you sneak to the edge here and you walk up and you can see that guard there. I'm going to shoot him with a poisoned arrow and he should die, well, not instantly, but two arrows and he's dead. You don't have to worry about him. Avoid these trap um, triggering pads. Here you can pick up a potion, and there's really nothing else, so I will fast forward to the next location. Now you're in the main area of the, of the cathedral. There's some Falmore guards and spiders. You can snipe them, take them down. Uh, you can explore the outer area of the cathedral, which is in that big gate, behind that big gate, there's plenty of um, eggs, axe, and other stuff. 
Again, you come up here and you can activate the cathedral gate. There's also some treasure chests and stuff. That lever activates the gate. Yeah, don't even grab hide shields or anything like iron shields unless they're enchanted. This is going to be taking an apt. I'm going to fast forward to where I open up the casino, uh, open up the, not the casino, the cathedral. Actually, I'm not going to fast forward because now I got the chest open and you come over here and you activate the lever. That opens up the main cathedral. If you explore the outer area here, there's some Falmore and some spiders. I'm just going to cut that stuff out because this is getting to be a fairly long video and it will be a fairly long video. So I'm going to transition to entering the, the cathedral. If you explore around the outside of the cathedral, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, egg sacks, poison stuff. Yeah, it's pretty much, you just got to walk around and explore. But this is an extremely long video, or going to be. So now let's get to this cathedral. And you're going to have to fight um, one of these centurions, which, yeah, they're pretty tough. And I'm going to load up here. Ooh, I fast forwarded. I barely got burnt by the steam. You do not want to get hit by the steam of these guys because they are going to, how shall I say, kill you very rapidly. The steam will scald you. Now, let's just see. I went to Unrelenting Force just by accident. Now I'm going to uh, the key to the Altafad lift. And once I, let's see, fast healing. I'm going to heal up here. There's some areas outside of the lift here where you want to take a look around because there's some treasure. Now, before you enter the lift, again, take a look around here. The cathedral, there's some treasure chests hidden. What you want to do is once you open the lift and you're going to get a surprise. Yep, here's a treasure chest. Easy to open apprentice. Uh, yeah, broke a lock pick. So much for easy to open. Yeah, here we go. Mm, little move around. And voila. Very easy. Now let's open this up and you're going to get a confrontation. And I'll explain a little later. Sella, let's just get out of here. Hasn't there been enough death? you want me to leave just waiting for me to turn my back so you can have all the glory for yourself never should have come here heard... Come upon the conflict with Umana and Sulia Trebius. Now, Umana has the Tag of Blood, whatever shield, and it's a pretty powerful shield. This treasure chest you can store stuff in, a lot of stuff in, and it's a pretty good place to store things. If you come back and pick it up, this lift will bring you up to the Altafad. Now, this is where you use the um, attunement sphere, and now you can get the Black Reach. I'll be doing a video on Black Reach, but right now, what you want to do is come up here and you can open this up and you can use. This area to, I'm going to do a quick save. 
this is where you can use the treasure chest to store stuff and eventually gather up all your stuff and transport it back to somewhere where you can process it. I'm going to dump this stuff in here that I don't need and come back. Uh, let's see, if I look at the peril, there is the targ, yeah, the targ of blood thing. It's a, it's a kind of a unique weapon. So again, I'm going to cut to the next area of and get out any more time. This is already 30 minutes and it's getting long. What I did is I gathered everything and brought it back to my house in Winterhold. Now, back to Altafad Cathedral and we enter Blackreach. And this is Again, I'm going to do a video on just Black Reach alone, but this is the kind of an interesting um, area. It's linked to, again, another, uh, how shall I say, adventure, which is part of the whole Dragonborn thing or Dawnstar. I'll do a video on that. I'm going to cut to where the Dragonborn gets or my character Calvin does find the dragon scroll in order to get to the dragon scroll you enter the tower of Marzak and you use this lift to get up to the top and once in there there's stuff to loot I'm not going to go through it. I'll just fast forward. And you can go through and explore and get what you want from it. Again, this is getting to be a very long video. So I'm trying to cut down on some time here. Now you get to the main area here where you insert the lexicon and you have to then transcribe it and press all these buttons and eventually you get the dragon scroll. I'll fast forward through all the button pressing and get to the dragon scroll. Now that you have the Elder Scroll, which is actually the Dragon Scroll, and the transcribed lexicon, you can go back to Septimus and he will give you part two of the Agum Infinium quest, and it's collecting blood. Now at the top of Tower of Marzak, you can use this to enter Blackreach, or you can go to Ultifod. To be honest with you, going to Ultifod and entering Blackreach takes a little more time. The Tower of Marzak is faster. And if you liked this video, hit the like button and uh, leave a comment. I try and respond to comments. I will be doing part two after this. And of course, if you want to make sure you can view part two. The best way is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, and you will be notified when I post part two, which should be in a day or two, because I post four videos a week. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments. And as always, thanks for stopping by.